Secotlo Tespa. Mis saludos y respetos. Oh, bless. Lazo Tlamati for the view. And uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Manny, the Jaguar Paul. Mucho gusto to all. So, hopefully everybody's staying hydrated uh, with this heat. Oh, oh, before I proceed, hopefully you about to uh, get comfortable, kick your feet up, spark one for the nation, maybe a little snack, popcorn, and I uh, appreciate you uh, giving me uh, some of your time to listen to this fucking OG, fucking dinosaur collecting dust. <laughs> Anyways, I want to talk about something very, uh, you could say, sensitive. Nowadays, people are very sensitive when it comes to uh, certain topics. People are quick to uh, make an issue out of nothing. Things could be simple and people make them complicated. Like, man. We're all entitled to speak our mind. It's a free country. And according to the law, equal rights, right? People like to go around uh, disrespecting other people. When that when the shit hits the fan and, and, and it hits them, they're quick to turn around and play the victim role. Oh. That ain't cool. The times have changed, people change, and time goes on, life goes on. We have learned to embrace in how this world circulates, making changes of beliefs, point of view, so on and so forth. Thanks to social media, we're able to communicate and see what other people across the world have in their minds and how they use your time when it comes to being creative and useful. We all live and we all learn from one another, of course. Whatever is beneficial to you. You got uh, a lot of young Latinos, Mexicans, Mexican Americans acting black, oh. wanting to be black. And I, I said it before, it's like, damn, where, where did we fail as older camaradas, as fa fathers and, and mothers and, and, in a household? Where did we fail at bringing up our kids? Going back to my days growing up, the cholo scene was in style. Everybody wanted to be a cholo. Everybody wanted to wear those. Yeah. Badass Cortez. Everybody wanted to wear Dickies, Ben Davis, Frisco, Frisco Ben, uh, the white shirts. Everybody wanted to learn how to use the iron, how to crease, take your time. We took pride in in our, our appearance. That was like fuck, man. You know, you go to the store, you go to the local swami, you buy your pantalones, your camisa, your shoes. It ain't, it's Friday night, you're ready to sport, look fucking nice and crispy, sharp, ready to uh, gangster road. <laughs> well, uh, those were the days, as for us, you know, growing up, baggy pants. And I'm sure that the OGs before us, used to clown us. They used to look down on fucking payaso, pinche vato cagado. Look at them big pants. <laughs> they used to talk to shit. It took a while for them to embrace it. Same thing with the bald heads. You know, back then, growing up as a kid, being pelon meant that you had piojos. Being bald meant that you had life. But after a while, it got embraced as a uh, fashion, estilo. It was part of the, the cholo culture, just going bold. Why? Well, I've heard of uh, people say that whenever, I guess, you would fight, having hair would get on the way. 
for being Pelon, the enemiga wasn't able to rip you by the greñas and fuck you up. I heard another uh, reason was uh, it came from the military. Go to the military, they bust your shit. So I guess when you uh, would hit the pinta or certain institutions, getting locked up, they do the same, they buzz you up. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember uh, juvenile hall or camp, uh, that's what they do. They give you a razor, you shave your little fucking three little pelitos and your head, you gotta, you gotta groom yourself. Anyways, going back to the point was, uh, so that was kind of uh, looked down upon as the OGs from the 70s, maybe 80s, didn't like that. You know, they were used to the hairnets, their estilo. I don't know how they looked at it. They got embraced. It became part of the culture. Well, now we got these morros lining up their foreheads, long hair, braids, nothing against it. At one time, I let my hair grow. I had braids, you know, I did a, a, I had my personal beliefs, my personal reason why I let it grow. I lost, unfortunately, I lost my grandma due to cancer. And I made a promise of letting my hair grow and donating the, the trenza to an organization called Locks of Love, which I did. And that was in honor and, and, and uh, the name of my grandma, Maria Marquez, rest in peace. Love you, grandma. Fortunately, I was locked up when she passed away. And so I always kind of felt guilty for not being there on her last days. Nowadays, uh, you got dudes with long hair, but they, they braid it. They get a little too fancy with it, too creative. They fucking Mexica warrior. That was my mentality. And I started noticing for a while a lot of homies in there letting their hair grow. And it was due to our culture. You know, we had that uh, that mindset of, a, of a, you know, the Aztecs, the Mexica, being warriors in there, locked up, working out. So that kind of added to the morale, added to the spirit, to the, to the cora, you know, embracing our cultura. I mean, at least to me. And when you see other homies that, that were doing the same, you already knew you were on the same page. No questions asked and none of that. It's not like you sit there, hey, what kind of shampoo you use, homie? What kind of conditioner? <laughs> what do you want? So, I mean, I can't I can knock on that, man. I respect that. But I guess there's people that trip when they see homies getting all fancy with different trend sides and, of, co of, of course, emulating the the, the African-Americans. Oh, Vato wants to be a, a Moreno. Moreno lover type of shit. And then it don't help when they have that swag. They start sagging, tight ass pants, uh, start talking like them, sounding like them, using their lingo. And top it off that uh that notorious n-word and i think i made a video on that check it out so it's like okay where did we fail as ogs what happened? i understand that african americans are very influential when it comes to sports music acting hey got give credit where it's due and, and they're very talented individuals but we also have talented raza could have been maybe uh the lack of uh appearances as far as uh us mexicanos latinos um maybe uh people above us trying to keep us in a box trying to stereotype, all right, you know, Mexican's always gonna be a fucking selling raspados. He's always gonna be washing bathrooms, mopping floors. Who knows, maybe somebody have a bigger agenda where that's where they wanted to keep us. To see someone like that growing up as a kid, sometimes kids 
are really, really sensitive when it comes to image. They care what people think. They care what people say. So they don't want to be viewed as a construction worker. They don't want to be seen as a, a, a old dude mopping the floor, washing cars, cutting grass. Check this out, homie. Homegirl, do me a favor. Look at yourself in the mirror. What is it that you see? Are you embarrassed of the reflection? Are you embarrassed of the reflection? Or maybe uh, going back, these kids, how do they view our culture, the raza, our environment, the results, uh, the benefits that are put on the table? For us or for the rest of the gente are we worth are we worthy of of them now it goes back to uh, early history our parents come to the United States of America for a better future a better life for the family for the kids for the kids of the kids grandkids grandchildren so on and so forth. I remember uh, hearing that uh, in, uh, you come across some homies uh, that don't speak nothing in Spanish. They don't know nothing in Spanish. They understand a word or two. Or you meet people out there that look straight up Mexican, Latino, they got that big old fucking nopal on their forehead. And you come at them in Spanish and it's like, they look at you like, uh, uh, what, what you say? So they're clueless. Oh, I'm sorry, homie. I don't speak Spanish. Okay. So, uh, I've talked to a few people and I asked them why. Is it that you never learned Spanish? The parents never taught them Spanish. You know, and I hear, why? I done my little homework, my little research, and uh, I hear it one, uh, I heard it from one, one parent said that her and her husband were communicating in Spanish. So for them not to know what they were talking about when it came to sensitive or adult conversations, they didn't know. Cause you know how we are when we're kids. Sometimes we're just nosy. We want to know everything. Pues sometimes we get into conversations that don't pertain to us, and we hear that from our parents. Hey, hey, hey! No te metas en lo que no te importa. You know, mind your business. This is a dull conversation. Remember that? Or I've heard that. Uh, hey, we're in America. I, you speak English right here. No Spanish. Aquí se habla inglés. I've heard that too. So it's almost like uh, at one point in our life, the raza was ashamed of, 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 our, of our gente, maybe, or the struggle, uh, being illegal immigrants coming into uh, California for a better life, wanting to fit in, adapt, uh, wanting to survive. And, and back then, there was a lot of discrimination uh, from even the Pochos, Mexican-Americans, down to the Mexican nationals. And I think it just fell, fell on being embarrassed of, of who you are, where you come from. So what happens? You embrace anything besides being Mexicano. You want to sound white or you want to sound black, anything, but not Mexicano because you're ashamed of your roots, because you're embarrassed of the struggle. You care what people think and say. And I'm not saying, I'm speaking in general. And I was thinking maybe that could be a possibility and why we got a lot of these morals, these mocosos, 
these youngsters embracing the African American swag. So the Moreno language, the lingo, their lingo. They want to be viewed as cool, trendy, hot, popular. They want to be influencers. And they don't want to be known as wetbacks, uh, immigrants, uh, paisa. They don't want to be uh, called upon their accent. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. But why? Why does it have to go to the extent of being something you're not to erase or to kind of fool yourself into a reality that's not your reality? You get what I'm saying? It doesn't help when you have black African Americans dominating TV, movies, music. It's more of influence. It becomes a, a strong force upon people's minds. They start dropping these seeds on these young minds and they stop and they start to water these thoughts and they start growing to where they believe a reality that's not their reality they believe that they are something that they're not they don't know how to distinguish it and let me tell you example friday their movies you think it's cool when they mock the raza oh say hi to my aztec warrior Thetis for the thetis. I mean, really? Does it have to go to that extent of talking with an accent? Using that lingo that at one time Arasa was using? You know, that's disrespectful. But yeah, yeah, they could go around and 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 make fun of us on movies, music, music videos. Say hi to my Aztec warrior, big joker, little joker, baby joker. Like, come on, you serious? Now, you got the kids growing up looking at that. And I'm not knocking the movie. I'm not knocking Ice Cube. Very creative uh, idea. Very funny comedy, but when you strike at a certain community, a certain uh, environment, it, it, it it's it's not good, man. It just shows me that you are racist. But then again, when people back their shit up, you turn into the victim. Right away, ah, Black Lives Matter, this and that, and we have rights. Quick to cry, the biggest ones, always. Quick to cry like big babies. Suck it up, homie. And that's one of the one of the things that fucked us up, that we were taught to shut up and suck it up, take it like a man. Ah, nigga, no llores. Amarate un huevo. Ah, no, ni, ni se te ocurra hablar, ya, ya. Déjalo en paz. Leave it alone. We would hear that from our parents. Or on this is a chismoso. No says your own. That's the way we were taught. So I believe going back to the to, to the idea of what I was talking about. Uh, this is just speculation, my theory, and how maybe there's still raza that are ashamed of our roots, our culture. At one time, our estilo. They're ashamed to be called uh, Mexicans, immigrants. They're ashamed of having a, a paisa as a mom or dad. I'm first generation Mexican American, I'm proud of it. But I'll never, ever forget where I come from. I love my cultura, man. Going back to our history, whether if it was taught to us the right or wrong way, still beautiful to me and I'm gonna make the best of it.
But I know one thing that I'm going to keep it real and I'm going to be true to myself, be myself. And I'm not going to portray or try to be anyone that I'm not. Not cool when you have people mocking the raza, mocking our activities, our beliefs, our point of views. And then they want to sit there and cry. Why me? I'm the victim now. Ivatos forgot that at one time, you know, these, these little groups got together because of bullies, because of uh, predators that were trying to uh, punk our people. Mexicans, majority, we're little, we're little, little essays, but with big hearts, I'll tell you. We got that cora, man. That's one thing, man. Hey, hey, I was tired by my jefito, my grandpa. Hey, mijo. You get down. I said, la madre. Never fucking turn it down. Even if they fuck you, fuck you up, you get up. Dale gas otra vez, mijo. Que miren, que tienes huevos. We're not always going to win them. But hey. I'm about to at least try it. All right, people. Hopefully, I made a good point. That's just my theory once again, speaking in general. You know, I believe maybe uh, I'm trying to figure out where do we fail? What happened here? This is something already that might not change. Not anytime soon. The youngsters using the N word and acting black. They think it's cool. It's a trend. Uh, I don't know how women feel about that. These young little ladies. I don't know if they're attractive to dudes like that. You should be grateful and thankful in how God created you. God created us all in his own image. And you should be happy and thankful for that. But hey, that's a whole different topic. You know, it's just... I have so much to share. I got it circulating in my mind. It's just finding the right words. That's why I came and thought I'd make another video. Maybe get get some you know points, some facts that I maybe missed out on the last one. But uh, with that said, much love and respect. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know how you feel. And don't take nothing personal. Big, big bundle of love to all my auntie, all my warriors out there. Keep your head up and be yourself. Rock it, huh? Manny, the Jaguar Paul.